Hey everyone, I'm Joe and today I'm doing a review of Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. First of all, there's a little disclaimer that I should make, and that is I received this book for free from the publisher via the Netgalley website in return for an honest review, which this definitely will be. So, first of all, Nine Fox Gambit is a science fiction novel. It is the first of three novels in a new trilogy called the Machineries of Empire. So first of all I'll do a brief plot summary. The plot revolves around two characters, that is Cheris, who is a female cow, who which is a essentially the warrior or soldier class within the Empire, and General Shuas Jedal, who was a general, infamous as well as legendary, he won every single battle he was part in. Unfortunately during one of these battles he also happened to wipe out his own army on purpose as well as murdering every other crew member on his ship. So his government executed him and now 400 years later when this book takes place he has to work with Cheris to retake the fortress of Shattered Needles from a group of heretics or rebels and the plot goes from there and indeed obviously will be continued in book two and three in the trilogy which I'm looking forward to. So first of all the two characters Cheris and Jedal. Cheris is a normal soldier at the start of the book. In the culture that exists within this book you must do what you are told to do and it is inbuilt in people it's not in their nature to go against their own government and obviously if you're in the army then against your own generals and military structure you if you are a particular rank that's what you do there is no argument and you will never think otherwise it's just, it is extremely strict she also has an extremely good mathematical ability which is significant to the plot because the way the ships fight and indeed combat is in the books. It is based around mathematical formations and this style, whilst unusual to start with, is actually really nice and obviously it is linked to the traditional older styles of combat when armies would be on the battlefield and they would be in various formations and you'd have flanking formations around the side and you'd have other foot troopers in front and then heavier troops behind, long range troops. Same sort of thing except with spaceships basically. Then the General Jedi. He's a little bit different from most people because he was so formidable in combat because his way of thinking and his tactics and his sort of strategy ideas were very different from most of the standard military sort of doctrine that you have in this society. Everybody's very rigid with their thinking. He really thought outside the box box in really drastic manners and whilst this obviously made him you know to be unstoppable and legendary obviously it also made him infamous when he murdered all his own crew. It is the dynamic between these two characters Cheris and Jedi, which is the main focal point of the book and indeed the biggest draw and frankly the best part of the book. They are very different in a lot of ways but in a few very small ways they are also very similar and it's an exploration of how these two people from very different ideologies you know and the ways of thinking are actually very similar despite what they may think I mean they would certainly not think they're anything like and basically it makes for a fascinating sort of character study throughout the whole book and frankly it's something that I absolutely loved reading about and indeed I'm looking forward to the next book to find out where this goes. So onto the setting and the world building. All the ideas and the concepts in the book are introduced fairly quickly from the start of the book. And personally I did struggle with the first quarter of the book because I am not used to the style of writing and the, the style of the society in the book. I'm used to sort of British and American sort of type societies. This has a very Eastern feel to it, and this sort of 
unusual rigid structure in the book with everybody knowing their position in society and automatically conforming to it because it's just the way things are done is not something I'm personally used to in in any way but it really does work well and after a while you get used to it and you come to really find it really fascinating or at least I do. The ideas and the concepts being introduced this quickly does have the added benefit as well of making this story proceed at a really good uh, pace. It never bogs down or gets sort of stuck at any point. It just goes along and the action scenes happen quickly. The conversations happen really, really well and also quickly. And it just the pacing is basically extremely good in this book. And I was actually really impressed by it. So, as I said, the first quarter of the book I found particularly tough going. But stick with it though because it really is worth it in the end for the world building, the characters and indeed the character dynamics between Cherish and Jedi is frankly brilliant. It's one of the best dynamics between two single characters that I've read in a book for a very long time. It really was that impressive. And overall I am really looking forward to book two and book three in this trilogy. I believe book two will be at the end of this year, 2016, if I'm not mistaken. And then presumably book three will be next year, 2017 at some point. And I will definitely be reading them to find out what happens. And the book ends on an interesting cliffhanger as well, which definitely makes me want to read the next two. I pretty much have to really now. It really is a good one. If you've read this book or you would like to read it, then leave a comment below. The book will be released on June the 14th in just over a month's time, if I'm not mistaken. And with that said, that is it for this review. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.